The little neon sign in the window says psychic, but I'm not really psychic. Psychometric would be the appropriate term, but that doesn't make for a great sign, does it? Whatever the word, I've had this ability since I was a little girl. When I touched other people's objects and concentrated, I feel part of them. It can be anything, an emotion, a sense, like a certain smell or touch, or a flash of visual in my mind's eye. I've been working for 10 years now in a dingy little office above a pizza parlor. From the inside, you wouldn't have a clue what I do. My office always smells like garlic, and I don't keep any of the usual trappings. No crystal balls, no tarot desks, no mysterious symbols or pentagrams. So yeah, business is slow. But this afternoon, someone dropped in. He wasn't the usual clientele. A guy only a bit past teenagerhood, wearing a Lakers t-shirt. Usually, my clients are about 30 years older and female. Oh, sorry. I must be in the wrong place. He said as soon as he walked in. No, this is right. I'm the psychic. He sniffed. Is that for vampires or something? It's from downstairs. Oh, what can I help you with? Well, miss, uh... He glanced at the name card on my desk. Miss Greenberg? My mom has been missing for three days. The police have been looking, but they haven't been able to find anything. She and my dad went up to a cabin in the Catskills for a second honeymoon. My dad said she took a walk in the morning, and she never came back. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He forced a smile. Thanks, so, uh, I was wondering if you could help me. Sure, I'll try my best. Do you have anything of hers with you? He frowned. What do you mean? I work best when I can touch objects that belong to the person in question. It's psychometry, I added though the look on his face told me he had no idea what that meant. Oh, no, sorry. I don't. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a Swiss army knife. He rather recklessly slid it across the table, and I watched it skitter towards me with apprehension. This knife? Yeah, it was my grandpa's, and then hers, and then mine. I keep it with me anyways. I frowned. The less people who owned an object, the better. Otherwise, the signals got all messed up, and it was hard to pick out who was whom. Uh, okay. So your grandpa had it first. No, no, this is a family heirloom. First it was my great-great-grandpa's, then my great-grandma's. Oh, uh, I'll give it a shot, but I can't promise anything. I closed my eyes and lay my hands on the knife. As soon as my fingers touched the metal, a thousand sensations assaulted me. Steel forged into a blazing fire, candlelight against the darkness. The scratch of a quill against parchment, a woman's blue eyes, snow falling to the ground. I concentrated, weaving through the sensations, trying to pick out the one that I needed. And then, I saw her, or rather, was her. The smell of lavender filled my nose. I was standing in a humble kitchen using the scissors of the knife to cut a loose thread off my shirt. My hands were small and nimble. Black curls fell down my shoulders, bouncing in my peripheral vision. That's your mom, I said, my eyes still closed. The one who smells like lavender, with the curly black hair? Wow, yeah, 
Well, her hair is gray now, but yeah, my mind probed into the sensation, but there was nothing I could learn. Just more scenes of her in her home. I did see a little boy run past, who looked like a miniature version of the man before me, and that made me smile. I'm sorry, there's nothing more I can learn from this object. I passed it back to him. Do you have anything else? No, he hesitated. I do have a photo she sent me. It's the last photo before she... He trailed off. I mean, it's not an object, but I was going to show it to you. I showed it to the police too. Thought maybe they'd see something I didn't. Hmm. Photos, like all digital objects, were tricky. Occasionally, I could pull a sensation from them. It wasn't impossible. People were imbuing a part of themselves in their texts, art, and stories they created on a computer, just like they have been doing to physical objects since the dawn of time. But technology itself disrupted the senses. All the radiation, the processors, the chips, it all grew to a mechanical roar in my head that I couldn't block out. Here, he handed me his phone. I think you need to print it out, dear. What? I can't just touch a phone. Too much noise. I pointed. My office printer is right there. Ten minutes later, the soggy photo was laying on the table in front of me. Before I touched it, I just looked. An old woman with curly hair and kind eyes was standing on the porch of a quaint little cabin. Next to her stood her husband, a stocky bearded man. Both were smiling, his hand tucked behind her waist. The forest, green and alive, extended for miles behind them. I slowly lifted my hands and pressed them into the photo. I first felt the tree swaying in the wind, the tree that the paper came from, then the drops of ink themselves, chemicals mixed in churning, smelly vats. I blocked that out, focusing past that, past the details, onto the picture on the page, the shapes and lines that drew the woman and her husband. And then I felt everything. I smelled the dirt of the forest, the pine wood of the cabin, heard the birds twittering in the trees, the soft breeze in my hair, felt the sun shining through my eyelids, but I felt fear. Horrible, paralyzing fear. Worse fear than I'd ever felt in my entire life. Because I felt something else. Cold. Hard metal. Poking into my back. A gun. I jerked my hands away. Instantly, the sensation fell away. I was back in the chair. Back in the office. My heart pounded in my chest, and I stared at him, feeling dizzy. Are you okay? That child. That poor, sweet child. I am, I said, catching my breath. But I'm so, so sorry. I'm not sure your mom is. <laughs>